Hello, fellow um, anatom anatomers, anatomists, people interested in anatomy, health professionals, students, whatevs. Um, we did a whole bunch of videos on the ear uh, a while ago, probably ages ago in YouTube ter terms, and I promised that we'd look at the ossicles in more detail, the ossicles being the tiny bones of the ear, like the little, little, smallest bones in the body, right? So this is it. I'm going to briefly run through the parts of the tiny bones of the ear. This is what I'm talking about, right? Uh, here's the external ear, here's the pharyngotympanic tube. In here, there's, well, there's the tympanic membrane, but on the other side, that's the tympanic cavity, or the middle ear. If we take the bone off, we can then see the components of the inner ear. We've done all that. Go and watch those videos, slowly. Press pause, rewind several times. Many cups of tea. And then you'll have a good understanding of that anatomy, hopefully. I've done a half decent rather than a half assed job. But today we're going in here. So, so this is what I'm talking about, right? There's the tympanic membrane. That's the outside of the tympanic membrane. It's got a dome to it. That's the apex of the dome there. And what we can see on the other side is we can see the bone of the malleus. So we've got three bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. So if I take that out, because we're not, we're not interested in the other bits today, we're just interested in these bits. Um, it's difficult to tell. I've only got two of the bones on there. Where's the other one? <laughs> it's way in there, right? <laughs> I have another model. <laughs> Let's use this one. Right, so here's the tympanic membrane. There are the three bones of malleus, incus, and stapes. This, these are then the structures of the inner ear. Look, you've got the cochlea and the semicircular canals and stuff. Um, okay, so let's look at this. So this is the tympanic membrane, and we're looking at the external surface, so sound waves are boom, 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 coming in from this direction, right? And can you see that it's got that concavity? So that, like the apex, the tip of the concavity there is called the umbo. What a great word, umbo. And what we can see on the other side there is the, is the malleus, the first bone, the hammer. Um, and that, that is the, the manubrium of the malleus, or the, the, um, the handle of the, of the malleus. So it's, it's, the, it's the handle of the malleus that's embedded in the tympanic membrane. As the tympanic membrane vibrates, it deflects the malleus, right? The malleus bone moves. So the whole bone, which is kind of, uh, yeah, it's got a big lumpy bit on the top of it, right? The whole bone deflects and causes all the other bones to move, right? If I take some of these other bits off, well, actually we can take them. What we can see there is we can see the malleus articulating with the incus, the incus being the, the anvil. So we have a hammer bashing against an anvil, supposedly. There's malleus running up there, and then articulating with incus here. The malleus then has a head and a neck, and it's that head that's articulating with the incus, and it has lateral and anterior processes. And the lateral and anterior processes are difficult to see because they're, they're within this tissue up here. So it's part of the shape of the bone, helping to hold it in place, right? Now the incus has a body, a short crust and a long crust, which means a long limb and a short limb. And it has, and that, it has a lenticular process, which is going to articulate with the third bone, the stapes, here. So that's where stapes is going to attach. So can you see how we've got this kind of hinging arrangement and as the malleus is deflected, uh, incus is going to deflect as well, and then it's going to move the stapes bone. Now it's the it's the short limb up here. All right, so we're in we're in like we're in a cavity, right? In the in the tympanic cavity, and the roof of the cavity is up here. So it's it's the short limb 
which is an attachment point, an anchoring point for the Incus. It's holding it in place as it, as it, as it moves. And it's attached by a posterior ligament. The joint between the Incus and the Malleus gets called the Incudomalleolar joint. The stapes bone is on the other part of the model. So it's difficult to see right now, but if I rotate the model, you can see that characteristic shape there, right? There's stapes. And it's named stapes because it's shaped like a stirrup. Um, so I think stapes is a Latin derivation, but I'm sure stirrups were a later invention than that. There's incus, right? This is len the lenticular process of incus. That then is going to articulate with stapes at that point there. So you can see how the vibrations of the, of the bones here are going to cause stapes to move in and out. Now the reason stapes moves is because the base of stapes is sat upon the oval window of the cochlea, right? So what it's going to do is, as stapes moves, it's going to cause the fluid inside the cochlea to vibrate and then the hair cells are going to detect those vibrations. We talked all about that in the cochlea video. Go and have a, go and have a watch. Um, so the base articulates with the oval window and causes pressure waves in the, in the fluid. So stapes has a head and a neck and it also has two limbs or two crura, a posterior crust and an anterior crust or a posterior limb and an anterior limb and it has a base. The joint between incus and stapes does get called the incudostapedial joint if you're really keen, the reason stapes has got this hole running through it is because during development, the stapedial artery runs through here and that's involved in the development of these structures around here. Now, as development continues, the stapedial artery should disappear and then leaving that hole. So if the stapedial artery doesn't disappear, so a persistent stapedial artery in the adult, that would affect the movement of the stapes bone. There's also a um, stapedial muscle that affects the movement of, stapedia, uh, of the stapes bone. But we talk about things like that in the other videos. Go and check those out there. Here the focus really is on the parts of the ossicles. And that is it. Remember that the function of these bones, the reason these bones exist is to, is to take the, the very low force of vibrations in the air that you're hearing now as I'm talking and you're your speaker is vibrating the air and it's vibrating a tympanic membrane to take those vibrations and essentially amplify them so that we can transfer them from the medium of air to the medium of a fluid. So going from a relatively large tympanic membrane and gaining some mechanical advantage through this series of bones to then the base of stapes pushing on the, the small, relatively oval window can then cause hopefully pressure waves in the fluid within the cochlea, which will cause the deflection of the membrane and the hair cells will pick that up. But all that sort of cool stuff, right? Okay, there you go. Simples, right? By the way, right? If you're, if you're, a, if you're a student at Swans University, have you noticed these things here, right? In the anatomy lab, I've stuck QR codes and NFC tags on, um, on the models, right? So if you've got an Android phone, or yeah, if you've got an Android phone with NFC, you can probably go bloop, and it takes you to a little web page, tells you all about the model, number guide and stuff. If you haven't got an NFC phone, you can use an iPhone or an Android phone. Just get a QR code app that just recognizes that barcode. Get a free one, don't be a mug, don't pay for them. Bloop, take you to the same web page. Cool, huh? Um, I haven't done it for all the models, but I'm getting there. See you guys next week.